play with regular characters. So they're isolated within, they can trade with other hardcore characters, but not with normal characters. They also can't trade items between, you can't trade items between your hardcore characters and your regular characters. Um, and then the other big, the big difference is when you die, your body doesn't drop. So you, you're gone, your items are gone when you die in D3. So it's not like you can have somebody with you who can collect your body and pull your stuff up. So it's a little bit harsher on that front. Um, and then PVP is something we're still kind of t internally debating. And I think the PVP strike team is really concerned that um, if we have you die permanently in an arena, then hardcore players will never play arena. And that, I think that's probably a good point. I still feel like there needs to be some kind of way to do hardcore dueling. So we're thinking about how we could allow that. Ah, no fall. Uh, that's it. I'm sorry. Get back in line, though. <laughs> wow, Chad. Cracking the whip. It's not my fault. Hey, guys. I got a couple questions about Inferno mode. First one, do you expect Fresh 60s to be able to succeed in, heart, or in Inferno? And two, do you ever plan on nerfing Inferno to make it more accessible to uh, the casual players? So I didn't get the first part of the question. Do you guys expect fresh 60 characters to be able to succeed in Inferno? Ah, okay. Um, no. We expect you will have to farm hell. So, and will we nerf it for, for, um, for all the noobs out there? Um, probably not. Hey, calm down. We, we said it was going to be hard. We had a video and everything. Jeez. Um, Probably not. I wouldn't promise that we'd never nerf it because certainly we've seen like, in the development of World of Warcraft, we've seen like super hard bosses show up and, and even the most hardcore of the hardcore go, okay, he's a little too hard. So I don't want to say that we'd never nerf something because it could be too hard even for the super hardcore. Um, so, but we won't nerf it to make it casual. Thank you. Uh, this this might be a stupid question, but uh, I was in Diablo one and two. There was a considerable amount of fog of war. I was wondering in Diablo three if uh, why that wasn't there. Oh, I guess there's not as much. There is fog of war in Diablo three. Yeah, uh, I, we, I, we did take fog of war out of your hub town. So like New Tristram has no fog of war, so you can easily find all the stores and stuff, but. Unless we're misunderstanding you, there is fog of wherever else. I mean, we changed the we changed the reveal distances. They may not be consistent with Diablo two. Yeah. Or do you or do you mean the light radius? Yeah. Around the oh the light radius. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Um, you know, a lot of that we were that was a long kind of hard process, and there are some dungeons in the game that really do emphasize the light rate because it is there. Um, it was more a, a thing of that going to a three D engine and trying to get the world to look really good and you know, be moody and feel the way we want when you only have one light. Like, it's easier with a 2D engine where uh, kind of everything, every sprite is kind of hand-drawn with its light already in it. But with a 3D engine, if you have one light around the character, it actually makes for a really kind of bland and bad-looking world. You need to fill the world with a little bit more light to make it interesting. And so it made it really difficult for us to do the, the light radius exactly the way we did D2. But we did try to do it in some of the dungeons. Yeah, yeah, it is still in there. Uh, it's uh, there are various areas in the game that are brighter than others, and some are darker than others. And maybe what you're seeing in the content that's out on the show floor is a little bit brighter than some of our darkest areas. So, great question. Hi. Uh, with respect to randomization in dungeons, there are some areas in Diablo 2 that can be frustratingly convoluted. I was wondering, like, why would you make a jail like that or the catacombs? Um, are you guys toning that down a little in Diablo 3? So, Kevin, I think the question is, um, are we going to not do crappy design? <laughs> to you. I, I'd love to know what you're, exactly what you're referring to. Um, so most dungeons are very random. Um, a change from Diablo 2 to Diablo 3 is there is quite a bit more story moments in the dungeons themselves. So in a completely random dungeon, as in one that rolls randomly out in the world, very often you've got a unique entry point. Um, say the Idol of Ragnar, there's a guy named Poltar who's a treasure hunter, and he gets into this little these old ruins and he can't get through in his own. So it's an escort mission, and it concludes at the end. So there's random dungeon in between, 
but he's got a, a set starting point and a set final room and the, the, the quest concludes. In other cases, like you'll see in the beta, we have some uh, levels that are very, that have very little randomness, like the Templar level. So you acquire the Templar in that level, he's got his little story moments, his open room. But even in there, there's some randomness in between the, the first room and the end room. Uh, he's got a much bigger set spot because he's got to get his armor and have his rescue scene and then have his final confrontation with John Dar and, and uh, ultimately kill him. Spoiler! Um, so, I'm not sure if I answered your question. There's, there's still a ton of randomness, especially in the dungeons. Thank you. Hi. Um, with, with there being a monetary aspect tied to the game via the auction hall now, my question is around the botting. So Diablo 2 was pretty much ruined by botting in its later years, and I'd like to know what you guys are doing to increase the warden protection for botting. That's all you, baby. Okay, so it's a, uh, the question is basically what are we going to do about bots? Um, so number one, I mean, uh, as Jay was talking about a little bit earlier, yeah, uh, there's, there's no question uh, from, from a warden standpoint, that's an investment that we've spent the past 10 years on. We're going to continue to do that. We've, we've actually been sort of insidiously, uh, you know, trying to figure out how it is that people are going through and re-engineering some of our systems or better understanding them. Um, we have some inherent protections given the nature of Diablo's gameplay in that uh, it, it, it does render the bots a little less effective, but it, it still makes it where an individual can go through and they can, they can just grind for 24 hours at a time. Um, so we're gonna be monitoring that. We're gonna be policing it really well uh, and making sure that we maintain the consistency of the gameplay. So I'm gonna, I wanna follow up on that too, because one of the things that I know is really annoying in Diablo 2 is the uh, people who would jump into games and broadcast and jump out, and that's something we'll be looking at as well. Um, it's a, actually a little tougher to do in um, our, our setup than it would be in, uh, than it was in Diablo 2, just inherently in how we kind of designed how you jump in and out of games. Um, but we're definitely going to look to any kind of like spamming or things like that. We'll look to try and stop as well. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, uh, here from New Zealand. I uh, was trying to monk out and I was just wondering, um, are all his strikes uh, single click, single attack? Or are there some like the old Barbarians D2 frenzy where you can just hold and go forever? Um, well, a lot of the abilities, yeah, you can you can hold down, um, and some you can't. But most of them, most of the time, you can just kind of right-click drive with uh, a particular ability if you want. Um, we've tried to design the combat so that there's really the most optimal way to play is never with just one ability, just held. Um, that it's always you're going to be better if you can swap in at least a, a follow-up, like a, a big hit that's controlled by either cooldown or resource or something like that. Because um, we find it's a little bit more fun when you're using a couple of abilities together. Um, so, but yeah, you can, you can do the same control scheme as Diablo 2. Great question. Thanks for coming. Hey, um, have you guys thought about adding WSAD movement controls so that players don't have to spam the mouse so much when kiting? Um, you know, we've played around with, um, and mostly, mostly played a lot with games that used that um, in kind of an isometric view, and the general feeling we had was two things. One, uh, you don't really want to support two control schemes. Um, it's really hard to make one control scheme feel great. Having to make two feel great just makes the challenge that much bigger. And we found just kind of the non-analog nature of the WASD doesn't work very well with isometric play. Like, we felt it didn't feel good, um, so we decided to stick completely with the mouse. Thank you. Come on up. Hey, guys. Um, I just want to ask you, in uh, Diablo 2, you used to have room words. Right now, you in Diablo 3 has... Um, Rune stones. So I was uh, mas I'm asking that are you planning to put the rune stones, uh, the rune words again, like Nigma, Phoenix, uh, Treasury, and a bunch of other words? No, sir. We're, we're not. Um, uh, we have a, a lot of new systems that sort of do everything that rune words needed to do. Um, you know, the rune stones. Of course, you have your vanilla skill and five variations on that times seven levels. So. 
this is like an, a ludicrously rich system. We also, um, you know, gems are coming back and um, they have more things that they do as well. We've moved a ton of the attribute or the stat points into the itemization game. So, you know, the item game is, is uh, a huge, broad characterization. Um, it's just awesome, yeah. Crafting, you can you make your own uh, items which have some set abilities and always random affixes as well. You can break those things down. You know, that's replaced gambling, for example, if you have something you don't like. Um, and so on and so on. Like, so we have a ton of new systems. Uh, we don't actually need rune worms at all anymore. Uh, we have it all covered. Thank you. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask. Let me look at it. All right, you guys keep teasing us about console version of the game. Is it coming out on console or not? Um, so, okay, we haven't officially announced anything, um, so there's my dodgy part of the answer. Um, so, we've not, I don't think we've been actually very shy about that. Um, we've hired people, I, we have a console team working internally, so we want to make a console version. I think that's pretty obvious, and you know, we're hiring right now to try and fill out that team. But we haven't announced it because we don't want to announce something until we're sure. You know, until we have a game that we can show to people, we don't like to announce things. And we've really only kind of been as upfront as we have because we've been trying to hire people and it's really hard to hire people when you don't, they don't know what they're gonna work on. So that's, so, but yeah, we'd really like to, it to be on console. We think it can work there. We've done a lot of experimentation with the controls. Um, but the most important thing for us is if it goes onto console, it does not compromise the PC game in any way and it feels like it was built for the console. It doesn't feel like a compromised product on either platform. It was like we built it from scratch for that platform. And if we can't do that, we won't do it. Yeah. Yeah. He's happy. Thank you. Hey, this question is about runes. Uh, there's five runes, seven ranks, and one way of doing it was you have a crimson rune and say, I want to throw in a blizzard and say, I changed my mind, I don't want to use Meteor. I take that Crimson Rune out, put it in Meteor instead. And then you changed your mind to where it was locked into one skill, and that created a situation where now you have up to like 5,000 different runes that could be traded or found on the auction house, whatever, because now you have a rank one for each class, for each room type. And you said a couple months ago in a press interview that that creates a huge inventory problem. And I was just curious what you were finalizing on, on that. It's so um, the short answer is we don't know. Um, we're still playing with that system. Um, you know, we talked about, I talked about that a few months ago just because I, you know, I thought it'd be fun to kind of throw out there, hey, here's a system in flux and here's what we're trying to do to fix it. And um, the system we put in has some good things about it. The, you know, the new ones with all the attunement and things like that. And it has some bad things, the inventory being one of them. Um, and it's definitely a problem we feel we need to fix, but I don't want to speculate on what we're going to do to fix it because we don't exactly know yet. But um, a lot of the times you've got to play with these systems for a while and really understand what all the good about the change you made is so you can figure out how to make it even better. So we are still working on it. It's actually probably the only system that we have that is still in flux in terms of design. Everything else is really pretty solid and just being tuned and polished. But that one, we still feel like it needs, it needs something. No, like back in line though, we'll get you. Be gentle. Nice hammer. Thanks. Uh, so back in D2, I pretty much perfected the Teeth Necromancer build, in which I just spammed every point in the teeth. I felt it synergized really well with my character. I was wondering if D3 is going to have any kind of spell equivalent to Teeth. A spell equivalent to Teeth? Like a similar spell does the same yeah. thing, just a radius of some kind of... Um, yeah, we've got several spells, I would say. I don't, I don't know that we have one that I can think of off the top of my head that's exactly like Teeth. Um, but we definitely, uh, we definitely have some skills that are, you know, multiple splitting projectiles with a little bit of kind of randomization. That there's, a, there's like, with rune variations, there's like 700 skills per class. So my guess is we actually probably do have one that's exactly like teeth, 
and that that's not the class that I'm playing right now. So, uh, but yeah, definitely, you should see something that's similar enough. Thank you.